Welcome everyone to another one of my ZBrush tutorials here. And uh, a few days ago I posted an image in ZBrush Central showing a pill bottle with a threaded body and a threaded cap. And I promised to uh, do a tutorial on it. So that's what we're going to do today. So anyway, uh, I'll show you the uh, little ins and outs of how you do this and I'll explain as I go along. So basically what we're going to do, we're going to start with a cylinder 3D. And we'll drop that to the canvas, press T for edit. And uh, what I usually do is I show my Z floor. I like to look at my Z floor. And uh, anyway, we're going to go with this down to initialize. We can get this thing kind of smooth. So we can have a nice round pill bottle there. We're going to make it into a poly mesh 3D. Now from here, what we're going to do, we're going to subdivide it a little bit more. I want to get some smooth round edges on this before we turn it into a dyna mesh. So um, we go to geometry and uh, we just hit divide. I'm going to do it twice here, maybe three times, and delete the lower. And so now we got a pretty, we got a lot of polys there. So we're going to go ahead and dyna mesh this. And uh, we're going to go to 256. It's a good little sweet spot to get a good clean uh, uh, booleans. And we're going to use a lot of the uh, booleans or sub in this tutorial. Alright, so we got this divided up and nice and smooth and we've got it converted to a dynamesh. We're going to go into our deformation palette. We're going to increase it by the Z a little bit, make it a little bit taller. Uh, so like so, like that. Now as you know, uh, this does stretch polygons a bit. So what you can do, you just hold down control, and like you're going to uh, do a um, do a mask, it will reproject it and will smooth out those polys. So that's going to be our bottle base. And as always, uh, I like to name the layers. It just kind of keeps you organized because we're going to use a lot of cutters here. Uh, so we're going to call this uh, the bottle base. And then we're going to duplicate this. And we're going to resize this in the z-axis and that's going to be our cap. So we'll, uh, we'll turn on the transparency so we can see what we're doing here. And we'll size down. We'll make a cap for our bottle. And about like so. And you can go into the move. You do your, uh, your transpose. Click on the z. You can pull it up if you like. A little bit. Maybe move down. See what you're doing here? And pull it up. And so this is going to be our cap. Alright, so we'll go to the sub tool menu palette and we're going to name this uh, bottle cap. Alright, the next thing we want to do is uh, we want to make a threader uh, to make some threads for both parts. I want to thread, I want to, after I do my booleans, I'll show you what I have to do first because. If you if you try to thread the bottle, and if you um, if you do a boolean with the bottle base and cut it out first, and then try to thread it, well, it closes up the mesh. So uh, I'll, I'll show you how we get around that. So we're going to go in here and we're going to get a threader, and we're going to pick a uh, it's the Helix 3D, and we want to initialize this one. And uh, I'm going to show you, uh, you go to your radius, you can bring down this, you can hold on shift, and it will kind of lock it on there. Uh, what I want is, I don't want so many threads. Uh, usually when you got a pill bottle or something, there's only really two or three threads on the whole thing. So uh, we're going to change that. We're going to change the coverage. We're going to get it about like, about like so. I'll reduce the coverage, because we really don't need all these threads. And uh, I'm going to divide it up to smooth it out a little bit. And now uh, we're going to make this into a. Uh, we're not going to do anything else here in the initialization. We're just going to go up and turn this into a poly mesh. And we're going to do some deformations on it. We'll go ahead and bring it into our other subtool palette here. We'll append it. And it's uh, Polymesh Helix 3D, which uh, should show up. There it is. 
what I want to do is I want to kind of get it into shape and we're going to duplicate this also because we're going to need a cutter for the bottle a thread cutter for the bottle and a thread cutter for the cap as well but I want to deform this a little bit and we're going to size it in the Z because we only really need looks like we're just going to give us about uh, what two threads there and then we're going to size this up on all axes and we're going to inflate it a little bit to give us a little thickness there and what we can do we'll go ahead and divide it up we want to keep it good and smooth because when you cut these threads you tend to get a little bit of uh, noise in there so we're going to go to our geometry we're going to uh, divide this a couple of times and delete our lower Gonna get to smooth out a little bit. Now we're going to uh, going to dynamesh this. We're not really going to worry about what we're going to cut. We're just getting our threader prepared here, and uh, we can uh, go into geometry and dynamesh it at 256. And as projection in progress. So now we've got our threader. We've got it nice and smooth. We've inflated it just a little. And we're going to prep it for the rest of the tutorial here. So we're going to, uh, we'll call this uh, threader bottle. We'll rename it. This will be for our bottle. Now we'll be making adjustments on getting the depth of the threads, but we'll get to that. But we're going to just kind of get things organized, get our parts put together. We'll duplicate this. We'll rename this one Threader Cap. Now, we get our everything everything in place here. <coughs> so, uh, now, we're going to go ahead. We're going to make our cutter for our bottle base. We'll hide the uh, threaders momentarily and the cap. We want to uh, get our we want to get our bottle um, cutter our bullion for our bottle we're going to get that go ahead and get that out of the way so we'll duplicate that bottle base and we'll go down the deformations we'll uh, do a little resizing in the X and Y first that kind of give us a uh, the thickness of our bottle here I'll take a look at it. That's fine for now. We're going to readjust the uh, Z height and we're going to pull it up so when we use it, it will cut our bottle out. So we're going to put that there and that's going to be our bottle cutter, our bottle boolean cutter. You can call it bottle cutter if you want. <coughs> going to be the bottle cutter. We'll go ahead and click this little icon. We're not going to use it right away, but we're just going to have it ready when we do the rest here. So we'll uh, hide this temporarily. Well, we'll actually uh, we'll hide this. We'll just have the bottle. Uh, we'll just hide it all. Uh, now I'm going to do my cap and uh, we're just going to do the cap cutter. So we're going to duplicate it. We have our transparency on. We're going to do a little XYZ, I mean XY deformation. And kind of get a, something a little thicker for the cap because we're going to be cutting the threads on the inside of this cap. So we want to get a little thickness on this one. We can adjust the uh, overall size of the cap afterwards. And so it will cut out. We want it to stick out a little bit. And make sure that's going to, uh, that will give us a cap. And we got a little room. Maybe not so much. We'll uh, adjust that XY a little bit more. And about so, about so. We'll go with that. Okay. So that's going to be our, uh, 
bottle bottle cap cutter. We'll rename this. All right, so we've got our cutters all lined up. And now what we want to do, we want to take our bottle base and hide this. Oop. You can go solo here if you want, but uh, I like to just hide the layers. We want a bottle base. And we're going to take our bottle threader. We're going to take our bottle base and we're going to move it down. And set it up for the cut. As I was explaining earlier, you have to do this first before you do your boolean cut on the bottle. But what we want to do is we want to make some adjustments here and figure out how deep we want this thread to be. So if we look from the top, we resize our threader here. Uh, we'll just size along all axes because we're just going to cut a thread in this thing. So we might want to, it looks like it might be a little bit out of line here. So we'll go up to transform and reset the pivot. Make sure it's nice and even. Uh, let's see. I think that's going to look about right for our thread depth. We can uh, switch back and get a better idea. But it looks like we're going to get a good cut there. Okay, and uh, <clears throat> we're going to move our threader up a bit. So we want to get it on the edge of our bottle. Yep. That's the scale. And move it up so, so, like, about like that. We might want to resize the threader just a bit in the Z axis to get our threads a little closer together. This and then now we can move it up. So it looks like we're going to we'll move it down. There's a little bit of overlap up there. We want to have it about like so. So that's going to be we're going to we're going to call this as good. I'm going to call it good on that. So what we want to do first, we'll thread the bottle. We'll make this uh, bottle threader a boolean. We'll click on the bottle, keep them both visible, and we'll merge down. Then we go down into our geometry and uh, remesh this whole thing. I got it set at 240, but uh, we'll go with, for the purpose of the tutorial, we'll go with 240. All right, so we got the top row bottle threaded, and we can polish this up a little bit in our deformation palette. We can do a little polish on this, just a little. That'll be enough for now. So now we're going to do our boolean. So this was going to be our cutter, and we'll uh, pop that down, get it below, and now we're going to uh, get our cutter situated. We might need to lengthen this a little bit. We'll take it down to where we're on our bottom, approximately. We'll go up on the <coughs> Z deformation of this cylinder. And then we'll move it up a little bit. Do, 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 like so. Just so we get a cut. So now we're going to cut our bottle. And we've got our sub tools. We're going down to, uh, go down to merge down. At that, then we go down to our geometry tab. We're going to get this back to 256 where I want. Right there. Then we do our dyno mesh. And this bottle doesn't quite look as good as the one I posted in Zebra Central, but uh, see, we got a little bit. Mm. Well, uh, you may have to adjust. Looks like I got some holes there, so I might have cut the threads too deep. But anyway, the procedure is you want to thread the uh, initial bottle first, and then cut it out. Uh, I didn't. Uh, I don't think I can close the holes on this with the modify 
Apologies, should be able to, but uh, it doesn't always work. So anyway, we got some holes in our geometry there. So if I wouldn't, have, if I made the boolean cutter just a little uh, smaller, we wouldn't have this problem. But I'm going to go on with the tutorial nonetheless. Um, anyway, <clears throat> it, it is it is sort of a complicated thing to do this. So anyway, now we're going to move over to our cap and. We've got our cap cutter. Let me hide these two. So we want to make our cap. So this is our cutter up here. We'll move that down. And uh, hopefully I'll try to avoid that problem with the uh, holes in the geometry this time. Looks like I'll uh, move this down just a tad. And uh, give us a little thickness there. Then we'll do our uh, <clears throat> we'll do our cap. Yeah, we'll merge down. We'll go to our geometry. We'll uh, go to our diamonds, and <clears throat> we'll type in 256 on this one. Yep, 2048. That's gonna be too big. Okay. Then we'll do our mesh. So now we've got our cap cut out. Now all we have to do is thread the cap. <clears throat> so we'll make this our cap threader. And uh, let's see, we're going to have to do some more adjustments here. I'll move the threader into place. And we're going to want to cut on the inside, so we're going to have to change the sizing on the, uh, the threader. I think the best route would be to shrink it down from here. <coughs> and this other one, I had the problem with, uh, it's gonna have to go down a little bit more. That's gonna be, uh, and we're gonna have to size this along the uh, z-axis. It's not going to look exactly like our uh, threads on a bottle. I got to make sure. I'm going to make sure I cut into the that area. I'm going to size along the X and Y. Yep. Yeah, rotate. And we will uh, we'll do that. That looks like that will give us a good little cut. Like I say, this is a little complex, and it does take some refinement doing this, so uh, we'll give this a whirl. And merge it down. And then we'll go down to our remesh. Alright, so we've got some threads in there, and it looks like I had a little bit of a bump. <coughs> so it does take some patience to do this, and quite a bit of alignment, but uh, for the purposes of the tutorial, I've got it done. It's just a matter of uh, okay, we got to move our cap up a little bit. And now I want to resize my cap in the X and Y. This one isn't. This one isn't going to look as pretty as what I did earlier. Uh, we can turn this off. And I'm going to size in the X and Y. And the threads aren't quite going to match, but. Anyway, we'll take a look at this. The way I presented this in the uh, in the still image, I brought the cap out a little bit. 
like so. And rotate it. What it is, I kind of tilted it to the side a bit. Kind of did like this. So, and then I want to apply a different material here. We own the cap. We'll do a white plastic. You can also, uh, if you really want to get uh, really get detail there, we could have done a uh, radial transformation with a uh, with with a mask, and you could have got some ridges on this cap. But I I'm not going to go through all that. Uh, just wanted to get you guys to show you how to uh, get this bottle underway, and uh, just so you spend the extra time with it, and you can get it pretty good looking here. Aside from my poor geometry <coughs> on the bottle itself, <coughs> overall, this will get you headed in the right direction. So I'm going to make kind of a brown medicine bottle type of look here. And uh, something like that with a gel shader. Uh, of course, you can do your transparency and all that. Uh, you can modify your material a little bit if you like. You know, you can uh, bring down the specularity a little bit. Uh, Maybe bring up the transparency, and uh, when you uh, I, that that would be a whole separate thing. But in the render, you have to unflatten the image, and then you have to go down to your BPR. Let's see if we can demonstrate this. Transparency doesn't work exactly like I like it in ZBrush, but you can get pretty close. So uh, we're going to bring up the color of that back a little bit, and. Uh, I'm going to do a quick little test render here. So, uh, what I was going to show you is uh, when you're doing transparency, say in the bottle, you can go to your render and you have to enable it in um, up here. And then you have to go over here to your display properties and you got a BPR settings there. And you do your BPR transparent shading. Uh, it doesn't quite Let's see, make sure I don't have this flat. And you got to unflatten it. That's another thing you have to do to do your transparency. And then there's some additional settings under BPR transparency. You can change those as well. But uh, anyway, you get a little bit of a transparent effect there. I think transparency actually works best in ZBrush when you have a reference object back there to show the transparency. Uh, but other than that, this is how you make the uh, pill bottle with a threaded cap and keep in mind that when you do this that you want to thread your cylinder first and then do your boolean cut. So uh, thanks for watching my video and I hope that will help you out in your quest to uh, modeling a ZBrush. And uh, thanks for watching. Alright, we're out of here.